And then the next one down is John Knox, right, the founder of Presbyterianism. John Knox lived from 1514 to 1572, and he came to faith late in life, I think about when he was 40. But he goes and preaches at St. Andrews, and at St. Andrews, the English are trying to attack, and the French are trying to attack. The French end up taking St. Andrews first, and he's made a galley slave, and he ends up being a galley slave at the age of 40 for a year. After he's released from being a galley slave, he's exiled from France, and when he's exiled to France, they're to he's told that he has to go to England. So he goes to England, and he becomes the, the uh, personal pastor, or the chaplain, to King Edward VI. And as the chaplain to King Edward VI, he, he's instrumental in the writing of the Book of Common Prayer, which is still used by the Church of England today. So there's problems with the Book of Common Prayer in that it's, it's saying that pastors are constrained by the church, but the Book of Common Prayer is pretty solid in its theology. Afterwards, when Bloody Mary comes onto the throne in England, he flees again, he, and he ends up fleeing to here. And he's here from, not all the time, but from 1554 to 1559. But he ends up being the past, elected pastor of a church here. We'll go to that church here shortly. Um, and when he comes here, Knox is really struggling with uh, the political questions. And he comes to, to Calvin and, sa and asks four questions. Whether a minor could rule by divine right, whether a female could rule and transfer sovereignty to her husband, whether people should obey ungodly or idolatrous rulers, and what part, what party godly person should follow if they resist an idolatrous ruler. And so he comes with these issues of how do you balance church and state. And Calvin doesn't go, oh, I've got all the answers. He actually points him to Bollinger and says, you should go talk to the successor of Zwingli. Calvin didn't like Zwingli that much, but he's, he's pretty friendly towards Bollinger. So he ends up struggling with these issues while he's here. And then when he goes back to Scotland, he very much sets up a separate government. And the view of church and state that we have today really flows from Presbyterianism in a lot of ways. There's problems with Presbyterianism, but it's the view that there's a separate jurisdiction between the church and the state. And a lot of that comes from the thoughts and the things that Knox was studying here, talking to Calvin, talking to Bollinger, and studying it himself. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friend. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com for more videos and other resources.